Through playtesting, we found that Left 4 Dead's unique cooperation mechanics were tricky even for seasoned gamers to grasp immediately. Failing because of rules that are not clear is never fun. Therefore, we designed the game instructor system to educate players as quickly as possible. Because first-time players can potentially join an in-progress game at any point, it was critical that the game instructor dynamically interpret game events. It keeps a running list of the lessons that can be taught in the current context and displays the ones that are most important. It also tracks how many times the player has successfully demonstrated that they've learned the lesson. Once the player has proven competence at any specific lesson, the hint is never shown again. Left 4 Dead evolved some of the contextual dialogue technology that we used in the orange box. Each survivor has a large database of lines to choose from based on their present activity in a variety of factors, such as their health, stress level, kinds of special infected seen so far, and many others. Each line can potentially trigger an automatic response from another character, allowing rich conversations to be dynamically generated based on the player's history together in the game so far. Another way we try and give players a new experience every time they play Left 4 Dead is that in addition to randomly placing bonus items like pain pills and pipe bombs, we vary the location of the more powerful weapons, the auto shotgun, the assault rifle, and the hunting rifle. These weapons will always appear somewhere in the main path, but there are four different areas in the subway station where they can spawn. This means that players can't take these positions for granted on repeated playthroughs, and must keep their eyes open for the weapon upgrades. Although it sounds ridiculous to talk about advanced zombie AI, we spent a great deal of time on the AI systems for the common horde. First and foremost is their ability to navigate. The environments in Left 4 Dead are geometrically complex and littered with breakable and movable objects. One of the design goals for the zombie horde was that there can never be a place where a survivor can stand that a zombie cannot navigate to. To make this happen required not only robust pathfinding code, but also path following algorithms as well. These path followers have to continuously evaluate the local geometry around them and decide whether to crouch, stand, jump, climb over, and otherwise navigate nearly arbitrary environmental obstacles. This covered body is an example of how we tell a story in the levels without using any words or overt storytelling. We wanted to show that there are other people in the world that are survivors like you. We figured most people wouldn't survive very long and you'd come across their bodies, but we needed a way to set these apart from all the dead ragdolls of the common infected. By simply covering a body with a blanket or a sheet, it becomes really obvious that this guy had a buddy, a friend, and when he went down, his friend had compassion and covered him up. This also tells a story about the state of the world that they wouldn't want to go out and bury the body they couldn't expose themselves to infected. So they'd have the bodies right there with them, but covered. Sometimes you'll see a covered body right outside a checkpoint. So it's like they were in a safe area and maybe during the night their buddy died from his wounds. So the next morning the other survivors didn't really want the body in there with them, so they dragged it outside. This was the best they could do for the guy. Smoking the set is a common film technique used to help separate background and foreground elements. We use particles and distance-based fog to do our own version of smoking. Our first experiments proved frustrating for players. We used a realistic dark fog, but this obscured character silhouettes and gave no sense of the vast surrounding environment. Once we lightened up the fog, the maps gained a greater sense of scale and distance, and the readability of characters greatly improved so the players could more easily tell friend from foe. Fog also helped players spot important events, like zombies climbing over distant fences. So changes in visual design not only improved the look of the maps, but aided players in anticipating and coordinating their team ahead of attacks. Early playtesting revealed that players often didn't know that other survivors were in need of help, even though the status of the other survivors at the bottom of the screen changed to red. When being attacked by a horde of zombies, we found players focusing exclusively on the in-game action and missing any changes to the HUD and the other player's status. We solved this problem by using glows around the silhouettes of the survivors' character models. We use red glows when other survivors are in need of assistance, and blue glows to show the survivors' location when hidden behind walls or far away. In Left 4 Dead, players carry flashlights to illuminate the environment. These shadow casting light sources not only add surface richness and provide important visual depth cues, they tie into gameplay. For example, because a player's flashlight is attached to his or her weapon, the light becomes pointed off to the side when reloading or performing a shove attack. In a sufficiently dark area, this can cause the player to be effectively blind until they are done reloading or shoving back an enemy. 
Like so many of Left 4 Dead's game mechanics, this encourages cooperation, as players know they may be left in the dark if they choose to reload at the wrong moment. Before there were rescue closets, survivors who died during the game had to wait until the next checkpoint before they could rejoin. As the game matured, the time between checkpoints reached 10 to 15 minutes, clearly too long for a player to sit in spectator mode. Although it may seem obvious now, it wasn't really clear how to bring dead survivors back into the game in a simple and believable way. Once we hit on the mechanic that you're rescuing a survivor who has barricaded himself in, the problem was solved. This solution is typical of Left 4 Dead game mechanics. Hearing a trapped friend call for help creates a dramatic situation for the survivors and creates a new short-term goal for the team to accomplish. Also, finding a lone survivor that joins your team is a staple of the horror movie genre. Finally, it provides plenty of opportunities throughout the environment to bring dead players back into the game. We set out to create an interesting trade-off between the pipe bomb and the Molotov from day one. Given the limit of a single item in your inventory, the choice needed to be meaningful. From early on, the Molotov was a clear winner, providing a dynamic area of denial with interesting strategic purposes and pitfalls, especially against the boss infected. The pipe bomb was intended to provide a balance against a rampaging horde, but initially it proved far less successful. Given the frenetic pace of enemies in action in Left 4 Dead, with typical engagement ranges of 5 to 10 feet, using a traditional pipe bomb in any sort of intentional way was nearly impossible. You'd see a mob of zombies, whip out the pipe bomb, and by the time you were winding up for a throw, they'd already be eating your face. No amount of tweaks to the detonation mechanic or timing solved this issue. It simply wasn't fun. Given that the horde is drawn to shrill, high-pitched sounds, we decided to take the homemade nature of the pipe bomb one step further and attach the guts of a smoke detector onto it. This provided just the element that the weapon needed. Against mobs, you now have the ability to draw them to a point and destroy them. It has the strategic advantage of being able to deflect an incoming rush from a user or a teammate who's being overwhelmed, and rarely feels like a wasted opportunity when used. Now when presented with a pipe bomb and Molotov trade-off, you have to weigh what situation you're more worried about facing next, and how the rest of your team is outfitted. The mechanics of the weapon help to reinforce fictional elements within the world while falling in line and fulfilling our initial goals for its purpose. And seeing a bunch of zombies turn into goopy red mist as the result of a big explosion never hurts either.